Canadian Prepper here. So today's video is going to be a continuation of the After the Collapse installment I did entitled Human Threats and Criminology. So in that video I presented a typology of seven different criminal elements that might present themselves in a post-disaster environment. And in this video I'm going to expand upon that, not so much talking about those seven categories, but various personality types and characters which may pose a risk to your safety. So let's get to it. All right, so the first group of people that I want to talk about are radically minded people, the fanatics, the fundamentalists, the extremists, people who are very passionate about certain issues. It doesn't necessarily matter what kind of issue because radicalism, fanaticism, and extremism, they're all potent and hazardous energies. So these people may have strong views about politics or ideology, demographics like race, animal rights activists, could be very religiously motivated. Now some of these people might deep down believe that they're doing something good for the world. In fact, I'd venture to say that 99% probably do. And some of these people might have ideals and beliefs that even you would agree with. But because these people are so passionate about these issues, uh, that passion is at once a great strength, but it's also a great weakness in a sense. It does require emotional instability on some level because there's definitely going to be anger there there's going to be righteous indignance and some of that like i say may be justified unfortunately it's the farthest thing from rational and under a certain analytical light it could be viewed as unstrategic to be radical in your approach to anything in life which is not to say that there's not a time for temperaments to flare and for people to grab the pitchforks and storm the front gates. But at the same time, radical people can prioritize the needs of their cause over the needs of people that surround them. With that strength of having the ability to be so passionate about a certain cause, like I said, it comes with that emotional immaturity, which has a temperamental aspect to it, which makes these people struggle working as a team with pretty much anything and I myself have exhibited these traits in the past when I was younger you know we all go through that rebellious phase and that's kind of where these people are stuck in a way so at once it's a very powerful thing these people are like sprinters you know they can run really fast but only for a short period of time before they burn themselves out when survival is a endurance race you know so you need to work with people you need to be able to keep a cool head even though you may feel that your beliefs are very justified you still need to use discretion you still need to take the appropriate steps and be patient with changes in order to have any chance of your ideals manifesting so these people's fervor and righteous indignance may be more trouble in its worth they have the ability to whip people into an emotional frenzy, which puts their groups at risk of herd mentality, groupthink, this lynch mob swarm-like mentality where nobody's really exercising any rational thought with their decision making, and the group is just uh, looking for a sacrificial lamb or some scapegoat to pin all of their problems on. And you might have seen that movie, The Mist, and it's a great example of this where the one religious lady in that movie really is providing the people with an explanation of what's going on and her explanation of course is biblically based it's a very fundamentalist biblical view and not one hour into the movie she has all these people sacrificing people in order to keep the monsters away and that, that may just be a movie, but I don't think it's very far-fetched because in desperate times, people are going to revert to emotionally and spiritually vulnerable states that are going to be exploited by these charismatic and overzealous fanatics. Now, not all of these people are going to be religious fanatics. Some of them are going to be very brilliant-minded people, artisans, scholars, theologians. These people are going to be very intelligent and they're going to have a profound sense of injustice which of course is all relative to what one sees as just some people however feel more obligated to fulfill their duty in restoring justice but with this tenacity and zeal that they bring to the table comes unfortunately a certain unpredictability 
and I've had friends like this before where they're very intelligent, very passionate people who have a profound sense for the injustices of the world, but unfortunately that same thing which fuels that sense of injustice and that indignance also comes with its own emotional immaturity which makes them hard for them to communicate in a group and function as a member of a group. And there's that old saying of course that the road to hell was paved with good intentions. Now this may seem counterintuitive to most people but I would advise as much caution of those who want to overtly hurt people as those who vehemently want to protect people. Because once again, the road to hell was paved with good intentions. Both, in a sense, are attempts to control people. And the problem with radicalism, you take, for instance, a rebel who's against the establishment or something like that. The irony with the progression of his overthrow of the tyranny, the establishment that he sees as the problem, is that in order to get there, in order to dethrone the queen and the king and the aristocracy, he must use the same harsh methods in order to get there as the aristocracy used against him. So in being fueled by this sense of injustice, he necessarily must embody all of those characteristics of his enemy in order to get to that place where he now can be the benevolent dictator. And we all know how that historical progression always goes. Eventually history always just repeats. It's just so tragically ironic that the people we fear the most, we can become those people if we're not careful in how we go about resisting them. In order to overcome the tyranny they face, they must use tyrannical methods. They must unfortunately become very ruthless in their method. It's like that scene in Apocalypse Now with Marlon Brando, where he's talking about how the guys, they were cutting off all the arms of the children in an attempt to save their people to show basically it was an act of terrorism. The whole idea there is that people are willing to commit atrocities to preserve what they feel is right. And just to give you another example of an idea that I've had with regards to this before is I've thought sometimes that people who are very extreme, say right wingers, are probably more prone to becoming extreme left wingers than moderate left-wingers and vice versa. Not only is that because the political spectrum of course wraps around and meets on the other side where fascism and full-blown communism basically become the same thing at some point, but the radicalism there is the common enduring factor and no matter what these people do in their life because they are so passionate and like I said this may be a brilliant trait but unfortunately because they are so passionate and radical they are radical in every single thing that they do in life. So just be careful of people who have very strong beliefs and opinions even if you agree with those beliefs. Probably especially if you agree with those beliefs because you'll definitely be inclined to join those people without perhaps thinking of what the consequences of that temperament they have might entail for you being a member of their group in the future, especially in a disaster situation where resources might be scarce and conditions are gonna be far from ideal. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a need in certain circumstances for some form of what could be construed as extremism. There's arguably a need for social justice and the preservation of civil liberties that's presented itself many times throughout history. But I'm just saying that you should use caution, especially in an after the collapse arena where, like I said before, there is no rule of law. So these people are gonna be doubly more unpredictable. So as empowering as that sort of personality it can be, it is not without its risks. And it should be treated like a loaded weapon. It can be a very useful tool to have in your arsenal to have somebody like that. However, it can backfire and ultimately shoot you in the foot at the same time. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to be concerned about people who oppose you and have these characteristics because they're going to be the ones on the front lawn with the pitchforks and the sacrificial lamb rotisserie going 24 7. And I find it very ironic once again I have to use irony but in looking at my own situation 
how at once wanting to change the world and make it a better place, coming to the conclusion that was very cynical and jaded and almost misanthropic about mankind, there is a risk of having such a high ideal as to where the human race should be that you might come to actually hate the human race for never being able to achieve that. So it's kind of like ideological perfectionism. Nothing is without its drawbacks. So the short of it is be mindful of the risks of very passionate people. Now the people who do take a religious fundamentalist approach with what I'm talking about here are the ones who are obviously at risk of taking their groups down the road of cultism and all the naughty things that that entails, the ritualistic sacrifice. And this is something they've done uh, all throughout the ages. When times got tough, there was a sacrificial lamb. If you look at the ancient Mayans, if you look at the medieval ages, there was so many examples of people who basically got lynched when times were tough because people needed a scapegoat. Now that whole group psychological aspect is something I'm going to be going into more detail in, in a future video whereby these types of people that I'm talking about, the charismatic, possibly even narcissistic ones, are using what we call peripheral root persuasion to appeal to people's emotions instead of their intellect in order to manipulate them into doing very heinous things. But that's something I'm going to save for a future installment of the After the Collapse series.